So we can start by eliminating this toast message that we used for debugging in the previous application. We don't need it right now, so that's why I'm going to delete it. And then after this finally statement, as you can see, if I click on this uh, bracket, I can see where this finally statement ends. And it just ends with this uh, bracket right here. And after it, I want to write some code. And right here, I'm going to say initialize game. That's the function that I want to create. So that's how I call the function. But right now, I have to also create it. So I'm going to go just uh, above this uh, on create method. And I'm going to initialize this void initialize game method. And basically, this is just a, a void method, so it doesn't return anything. It's just a place where you can put your code. If you have some lines of code that are related to each other, then you can just uh, make a, a method with it. And in this case, they are all related because when you want to uh, set up all the text views and input fields and uh, whatnot, then you have to just uh, put everything inside this initialized game. And we're going to use these uh, lines of code uh, multiple times. So we're going to use them when we create our uh, game. So in the on create method, whenever our application is created, we want to initialize everything. And uh, also we want to set up uh, the game when uh, we click on reset button, because then everything has to be um, set up um, also. And so that's why we use a function, because uh, if you have 20 lines of code and you want to uh, use them in two places, you should rather create a method and then just call that method two times. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing right now. And the first step in this method is to uh, get a word to be displayed on the screen. So first of all, we have the array list of words. Now we just want to make sure that we have everything set up in this text view with uh, my word. And first thing we need to do, I'm just going to leave a comment right here. And I'm going to say, we're going to handle uh, the word. And what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle the array list so that all the elements are displayed randomly. And then we're going to get just uh, the first element. And then we're going to remove it. So basically what we're going to be doing right now is first of all, we're going to say collections from java.util and then dot shuffle. So we're going to shuffle our list. And so I'm going to pass this uh, list of words. So right now we have all the words randomly shuffled in my array list so that the first word won't be the one that I have in the database. Um, so basically, as you can see, word is just the first word that I have. Now, if I shuffle it, all the order is going to be um, just randomly. Uh, every word is going to be randomly positioned inside my array list. And so uh, that's what my shuffle method does. And after it, I just want to get the first element from my array list. And so I'm going to say uh, word to be guessed. So I have to set up a word that the user have to guess. So I'm going to store that word inside my string variable called word to be guessed. And I'm saying my list of words dot get the first one. And I have to pass the index of uh, the element that I want to get. And uh, I just want to take the first element and the first element has index zero. Uh, and so I'm just going to get the element that is from position zero. And then I want to remove it because I don't want that word to reappear in my application I just want to whenever the user um, guessed that word and uh, he finished the game then if he wants to reset the game then we just want to uh, make sure that that word doesn't appear again so that's why we're just gonna say my list of words dot remove and then we remove the element that is on the uh, specified index now we want to specify index 0. So we get that word, store it in the word to be guessed, and then we remove it. And uh, after we do this, we want to create a character array. So I'm going to leave a comment, create, or just initialize rather, because we have it already created. Initialize character array. So my char array will be this uh, word, word displayed char array. And uh, this one is basically going to be created. Uh, from my word to be guessed. So I'm going to say um, 
I'm just going to use a function and that's going to be uh, where to be guessed which is a string and then I'm going to say dot to char array so this returns me a char array from a string and so now I have this uh, char array already initialized and uh, as I mentioned uh, in the previous video I want to have a string and a char array for this uh, word displayed and that's because I just want to uh, make sure that I can uh, have a better search when I want to search a letter inside it and also for accessing purposes and you will see later uh, what I'm talking about and uh, it's much simpler to have both of this uh, for the same entity so we have a char array and also a string for the word that is going to be displayed on the screen and right now since we have this we can just go and add underscores and so in order to add underscores what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a for loop and we're gonna go from uh, the second letter up to the second last letter and just add underscores so we keep the first and the last letter as they are um, from the word that we retrieve from the database but for now we're just gonna set up the for loop so we're gonna say int i so i is the iterator and uh, normally if you want to traverse all the um, all this uh, character array then you're gonna do it like this so I'm gonna show you how you traverse it if you want to traverse it from the beginning up to the end and then we're gonna modify this uh, statements a, a bit so uh, if you go to up to uh, word displayed char array dot length and you say I plus plus what this means is that you start from the beginning so the beginning is index 0 and then you go up to the end of the array and uh, this basically traverses all the word displayed char array but we don't want to traverse it all we just want to go from the second element so the second element has index 1 and then we want to end up to the second last element so that's why we're going to say minus 1 right here and so in this way we just add underscores to the letters that are in between the first and the last character um, so that we keep the first and last character inside our uh, word to, the dis to be displayed and so at this moment what we need to do is to say word displayed char array and then um, the letter that is or the character that is on the position i is going to be just an underscore and make sure that you uh, use single quotes because uh, characters have to be enclosed in single quotes strings are enclosed in double quotes as you can see an example of string right here an example of character is just right here okay so that being said we have right now our um, character array set up correctly and at this moment since we have the for loop already created now we want to reveal um, also the other occurrences or just all of uh, the occurrences of uh, the first and last character so we're going to say reveal all occurrences of first character so I have a typo right here okay so um, basically how we can do this we're going to create a new function so we're going to say reveal letter in word okay and we're just going to pass uh, the first letter in my uh, array and the first letter is just uh, this word displayed char, char array and uh, it's gonna have index 0 so that's just the first letter and as you can see I pass it right there and then we're gonna say reveal all occurrences of last character and so we're gonna reveal the occurrences of the last character and we're gonna take this uh, this function as well and we're just gonna change the index right now so that's gonna be quite simple to do and uh, I'm just gonna paste it right there and I'm just gonna go right now and uh, make sure that I set up the index properly so uh, the index that I need right now is uh, length of uh, my char array and minus one because that's just the index of the last one so basically just to give you a short explanation of how this works is that um, if you have a character array that has uh, let's say 
the length of 10 that means my characters are going to be from index 0 up to index 9 so that's why uh, this length for example if you have this character of uh, 10 uh, character array of 10 characters then uh, the length is going to be 10 but the last element is going to have uh, the index length minus 1 so that it means in our case 9 and uh, that's what we want to do and uh, we don't have these functions created but we're going to create them later on for now we're just going to split our problem in uh, multiple uh, small problems and uh, at this moment we have uh, most of the things done with this uh, part and right now since we finished to reveal all those uh, words or the letters in my word we have to create a string from this character array and I'm gonna leave a comment right here so uh, we're gonna basically initialize a string from this character array this char array and this is just for search purposes we use the char array in order to uh, just retrieve information and just uh, change the information inside it and the string just to search uh, better uh, from it it's hard to search in a char array because you have to always traverse it but if you are in a string you can just use a couple of methods that are uh, predefined and also if you want to search um, in a string as I said you have uh, a couple of uh, methods that are very good and uh, if you want to change a string it's quite hard but if you want to change a char array it's quite easy you just have to uh, say the index and then you pass the value that you want to um, update and uh, that's quite simple and so that's what we're going to be doing right now in order to initialize this string we're going to say word displayed string so uh, we're going to set it equal to string dot value of so we're going to pass a char array uh, right here so we're passing this word displayed char array and right now we have also a string for this uh, specific entity which is the word displayed and at this moment since we have uh, most of the things done we just need to display that word with underscores on the screen and so what we're gonna say is we're just gonna use a function so display word and we're gonna say display word on screen that's just a function that we're gonna be creating so display word on screen I'm just gonna call it right here and later on I'm just gonna create it so at this moment we have our first step finished but we still have two functions so this reveal letter in word and displayed word on screen those are two things that we have to make sure that we implement later on and then we can go and uh, handle the input so for the input basically what we need to do is just to clear input fields so clear this input field I'm gonna leave a comment and if you can see on the emulator we have this input one letter now this is perfect it's cleared at the beginning as you can see right now but when you restart the application you also want to make sure that it is cleared and so that's why we're gonna say edt input dot set text and we're just going to set the text to an empty string as you can see right there it doesn't have anything but two uh, double so two double quotes and at this moment we finish with this uh, input so the third part would be um, the letter stride okay and right here with this letter letter stride what we need to do is to initialize the string with letter stride so i'm going to leave a comment initialize string for letter stride and we're gonna initialize it um, with a space so not an empty string but just with a space and I'm gonna tell you in a moment why we are doing this uh, so I'm gonna type in letter stride and then I'm gonna set it equal to this okay and that's just because when you want to search for example the user inputs letter X and we want to search if that uh, letter is inside our letter stride string um, when you want to use the index of method in order to just see if that letter is inside my letter stride string uh, the problem is if my uh, string is just an empty string so uh, this would be the empty string if it's the empty string then uh, you will have an error and it doesn't work but if you have just uh, some sort of a string that has 
anything inside it then that works because it's a valid string so that's why we just keep a space over there and that's how it just works and at this moment we also need to display this on screen so we have to leave another comment display on screen so we have to also make sure that we display the letters uh, used so as you can see we have letters tried right here and we also we just need to display this message we don't need to display uh, the letters tried uh, because at the beginning the user didn't try any letters so we're gonna say right now txt letters tried and then set text and we're gonna just set it with a message um, so we should have message with uh, letter stride that's uh, just a string that we initialized at the beginning and that string contains the value of letter stride and uh, as you can see just uh, it is just this one so it says letter stride okay so as we have that defined right here now we can go to the next part um, which is um, to make sure that we have set up the tries left so I'm gonna leave a comment so tries left that's the part we're gonna be working here and I'm gonna say that we need to initialize the string with the tries left or just four tries left okay so we're gonna initialize this string and we're gonna say um, basically tries left string equals to and then we're gonna just say space x for uh, five times okay so we have it already created right here whenever the user starts a new game we're gonna have to we're gonna have to make sure that we have this uh, on the screen and then txt tries left we're gonna set it up and it's gonna be set text to exactly this string that we have right here Okay, so at this moment we have uh, basically all our functionality implemented.